All right, so in this project, we're gonna build some progress steps. And you might see these in different kinds of, of websites with forms, you know, multi, basically like multi-level forms, um, shopping carts, things like that. Just a progress bar that starts at one and just goes along here. So we're not gonna have any form or anything, but we'll have these buttons to control the steps. So it starts at one, you can see it's got this blue outline. If I click next, then it goes to two. So the line we get uh, transition goes over to two, two border lights up, click next again. And notice at the beginning, previous is disabled. So there's no reason to click previous. And then we can keep going. And when we click, when we get to the last one, the next is disabled. Okay, so we can just go back and forth. And if we're at the end, disabled, if we're at the end here, then next is disabled. All right, so we'll start off with the HTML style, we'll style it with CSS, and then we'll add the functionality with JavaScript. All right, so we're gonna jump into our HTML and I'm just gonna change the title to progress steps. And in the body here, we're gonna want a container around everything. And then inside that container, we'll have a progress dash container. And then inside there, we'll have a class of progress. I'm also going to give it an ID of progress. Okay, and no, nothing is going to go inside here. We're just going to use it for, for styling and for creating the, the line. Now we do have the circles with the numbers inside. So inside, inside progress container, but after the progress div, we're going to have a class of circle. And depending on which one is active, it'll have different styling. So the first one here, I'm going to just manually put a class of active on, and this is going to be one. And then we'll copy that down three more times. And we don't want active on these other ones. And this one will be step two. And this one will be three. And this one will be four. And then let's go outside of the progress container, still within the regular container and have our buttons. So this is going to be class. Let's give it a class of, of BTN. And I'm going to give it an ID of pre for preview. And I'm also going to make this disabled by default because we're going to start at one and we can't go previous if we're at one. And let's just say pre in here, copy this down and this will be the next. So we'll get rid of disabled here and change the ID to next. Okay, so we'll save that. It's gonna look absolutely horrible for now, but let's jump into our CSS and start to shaping this up. So I'm gonna use the Mully font. So I'm gonna just get rid of this here and say CSS question mark family equals M-U-L-I. And we'll add that here. And then I'm gonna add a background color to the body. So background color is gonna be F six F seven F B and let's see display flex. We can get rid of the column justify align center. Okay. That stuff is all good. So for the container, we're just going to text align to the center. And then for the progress container, Let's display that as a flex box. Okay, so it's gonna, remember the progress container wraps around this right here, not the buttons. So put that into a flex row. Now, as far as the remaining content, let's do justify content. So I want to take the remaining space here and put it in between the elements. So we're gonna use space between. Okay, so that'll separate them out. We're going to position relative so that we can position other things inside of it. Absolute. Let's add a margin bottom of 30 pixels and let's set a max width of 100 percent and set a width of 350 pixels. And you could change this, of course, if you wanted to. So now we want to start to work on the line that's going to go through the middle of these and then we'll work on the circles. Now, the way we're going to do this is the progress. This div right here is going to be the blue line that that changes that has a transition. When we click next, it'll go to two, three. So it'll go to a certain percentage. And then we're going to have a, a faint gray line behind it, which is 
basically represents the empty line and that's going to be on the before pseudo selector of the progress container. All right, so let's go ahead and create the blue line first. So that's going to be on progress. All right, we're going to set a background color. Let's set it to hexadecimal 3498 dB. And we want to position this to be absolute within the progress container, which is positioned relative. And as far as where I want to put it, I want it in the middle, uh, um, you know, vertically. So let's do 50% from the top and let's do from the left zero and it'll have a height of four pixels. Now the width is going to start out as 0% because we're going to start you know, at the beginning here, but just for now, so we can actually see it, I'll set it to 50%. Now this isn't directly in the middle, the top of the line is in the middle, but we want the middle to be in the middle. So we want to add a transform and set translate on the Y axis, which is the vertical axis. Want to move it up 50%. Okay, so now it should be right in the middle. And let's also set a Z index because we want to make sure this is behind the circles behind the numbers. So we'll set that to negative one. Um, and then this is going to have a transition on it because when we do click previous or next, we want the line to transition in a certain duration, not just flick to the next one. So we'll just do 0.4 seconds with an ease effect. All right, so that should be good. As far as that goes now, I'm going to just change this to 0% width because that's going to be the starting point and I'm going to copy this and go right above it. And this is going to be the progress container and we're going to use the before selector and then this is going to be the, the faint gray line behind it. So I'm going to use E0 three times as a background. These coordinates are going to be or the positioning is going to be the same. Um, the heights the same. The width, however, is going to be 100 because not 1000, 100 because it's going to represent the empty line and we don't need a transition because it's not actually going to do anything. It's just the, the line behind it. So um, I saved it, but the reason we're not seeing anything is when you use before or after you have to add content, which I I often forget and just set it to an empty string. So now we can see the line behind it. Now, if I were to set this to, you know, 50%, you can see now it fills in that gray line. But we're going to keep that at zero for now and let's style the circles. Okay, so all we have left now is the circles and the buttons. So we'll say circle. And for this, let's uh, give it a background color of white. And we're going to do a color of 999. So just like a gray color. And let's see, let's do a border radius. Whoops. Border radius. We want this to be rounded. So 50%. And let's set a height of 30 pixels. And we'll also set a width of 30 pixels. All right. Now we want to center the the um, numbers in the circle. So one of the easiest ways to do that is just display flex, align items, center and justify content center. So those will put the numbers right in the middle. Uh, let's see. Let's give it a give them a border. So border will be three pixels solid and let's do a light gray. So E0 so basically the same color as the um, as the line and yeah, I think that should do it. We, we do want to add a transition. Um, the border is going to change depending on you know where the blue line is. If it's up to two, then that border should be two and that that's going to pertain to the active class, which we'll style in a second. But for the transition, let's do 0.4 seconds ease and then let's do the active class. So circle, if it has the active class on it, then let's make the border color and let's set that to three, four, nine, eight uh, dB. 
and that should be the same as where is it right here three four nine eight db we could actually use some custom properties here so to define to define custom properties which are basically just variables we need a scope so i'm going to put it on the root scope and let's set the we'll say uh line fill and we'll set that well, actually it's the line and the we'll say line border fill and let's grab this and put that in there and then let's say oops, line border empty and that's going to be that e0 okay so now we can just replace this with var dash dash uh, line border empty and i'm just going to copy that and then this one here this is going to be oops this is going to be fill so line border fill and this one here will be line border empty. That's the border of the circle. And then if it's active, it'll be fill. So that way you can just if you want to change the colors, you can do that easily up above. All right. So now for the buttons, those are the last thing we want to style. So BTN. And this is actually going to have the back same background color as the fill. So we'll go ahead and just add that here as well. Okay, and let's set the color to white and let's remove the button border. Let's set the border radius to six pixels and set the cursor to a pointer. Let's set the make sure we inherit the font family. So inherit. Good. Let's add some padding. So we'll do eight pixels top and bottom 30 pixels left and right and add a little bit of margin. So five pixel margin. And that should do it. Actually, let's make the font size 14 pixels. OK, and then we'll just have a little scaling effect on the active. So like when we click it. So BTN colon active and we'll add a transform. We want to scale it down a little. So from one, we'll go to 0.98. That way, when we click, we have, you know, that little effect. This is disabled. Remember the previous. So I can't click that, but that has that little effect. Let's also get rid of the outline. So BTN, when it's in its focus state, we want to set the outline to zero or none. All right, let's also let's make it if it's disabled, if the button is disabled, we'll make it gray. So let's say button colon disabled because we can target that and we're going to set the background color to var and let's use the empty. And I'm also going to set the cursor from a pointer, set it to not allowed. So that way, if it's disabled, we can't, you know, it gives us that not allowed cursor, can't click it. So that does it for the styling. So in the next video, we're going to go ahead and add the JavaScript so we can click next, have this move to the second one, third one, have it move back with previous and so on. All right. So I'll see you in the next video. So now we want to start on our JavaScript for this project. So basically we want to be able to click on next and have it move to the next one. Click on previous, have it move to the one before it. So let's start off by bringing in what we need. Let's bring in, let's say progress and set that equal to document dot get element by D and we have an ID of progress. OK, we also want to bring in the buttons. So we have prev. Set that to prev and then we have next. Set that to next and then we also want to bring in our circles. So for this, since there's more than one, make sure you put a, a dot here because it's the class of circle. And since there's more than one, we're going to use query selector all, which will bring them all in as a node list, which is similar to an array. 
So let's call this circles. All right. So that's all we want to bring in from the DOM. So this here is going to be basically like an index. We're going to call this current active, which is going to represent whichever one is active, which will set to one by default. And then let's have some event listeners. So on actually, let's do next first. So we'll take the next button and let's add an event listener onto it. We want to listen for a click. And when it clicks, we're going to run a function and we want to take that whatever the current active is at the time and increment it by one. So plus plus will, you know, if it's set to one, it'll set it to two and so on. And in fact, we'll just go ahead and console log current active. And if we go over here and open up the console, if I click next goes to two, three, four, five and so on. Uh, so let's see, let's get rid of that. We do want to keep it within its boundaries. So let's make sure that if it gets to the end, it doesn't go past four. So we'll do an if statement here and let's say if the current active is greater than and then we can take circles, which we brought in and it's a node list so we can treat it like an array. So it has a length property. So we'll say if it's greater than the length length, meaning the amount of circles in this case four, then let's set the current active. Let's set that to whatever the length is, which will be, you know, the last one. So we're going to say circles dot length. Okay, now if we go and we click next, actually, let's do the, the console log again. So current active and then next so two three four and notice it's staying at four it's not going to five so that's what we want and then for pre now we're going to have obviously we need to you know show this in the dom but before we do that i just want to create the previous so i'm going to copy that and let's say prev dot add event listener and we want to take the current active and we want to Uh, decrement that by one. So we'll do minus minus. And then for the check here, we're going to say if the current active is less than one, then we know we're at the very beginning. So we just want to set current active to one. okay? because we don't want it to go under and in, into you know zero negative and so on. So we have those two event listeners. Now, after we do that, we're going to call a function called update. Oops. So we're going to call update there. We're also going to call it right here. So basically we're going to update the DOM. So down here, let's create a function called update. And first thing we'll do here is take our circles, which is a, a node list, and we can loop through those with a for each. And the for each takes in an a, a function. I'm going to use an arrow function and we want to say for each circle and then I'm also going to get the index. Okay, so for each circle, I'm going to check to see if the index of that particular circle is less than the current active. If that's so, then I'm going to add the active class onto it. So I'll take that particular circle. I keep misspelling circle and say class list dot add and we can add the class of active. Okay, else. Then we want to take circle and remove the class. So class list dot remove active. Okay, so I'll save that. And now if I click this, you'll see that this second circle is now highlighted. If I click next again, highlighted next again and so on. All right. And I, I realize we can't do the previous yet, but we'll get to that. So after this for each here, let's get all of the active circles because, you know, once we click this active is on now on all of these circles. And I can show you here so you can see active is on all of them. Um, so I'm going to say const actives and set that to document dot query selector all and we want all the class of active. All right. Now we want to 
handle the the progress bar because we don't want just the circles lighting up blue we want these lines to light blue as well so the way we can do this let me just first of all console log so if I say actives let's do actives dot length and let's do circles dot length and go to our console here and click so we get two four so two is the number of actives and the circles is always going to be four because that's all of the circles. If I click again, we get three, four, four, four. So I want to get a percentage for our progress length or not length width, because if we look in our progress class, it's a width of zero percent. We want to change that um, when we go ahead and click. We want that to change so that the line goes to the next one, the next one and so on. So if we take the actives length, actually, let's just console log this. Take the actives length, divide that by circles length. We get 0 0.5, 0 0.75 and then one. Now, our goal is to get these to be percentages for the CSS width property. So let's wrap this right here, this whole thing in parentheses and then let's multiply that by 100 and then that's going to give us 50 75 100 which isn't correct because 50 is going to bring it to here and then it'll go to 75 actually we can just we can try this so, so you can see so instead of console logging this let's get rid of the wrapped parentheses here and we'll keep the, this wrapped and set the progress dot style and we want the width property which is initially zero percent and let's set it to that and see what happens so if i click next all right so we're not seeing the line because what we're doing here is setting the width to a hundred but there's no unit it has to be a hundred percent so i'm just gonna concatenate on with a plus sign a percent so now let's click next and you can see the blue line fills up although it's not going to the right place it's going past the two because remember it was 50 75 100 which we don't want um, we want to change it to be like you know 33 percent 66 percent so we can fix that by just taking the circles length and the actives length and subtracting one from those which will give us a lower percentage so let's do that and now if I click next wait a minute that's not right we have to wrap this and we have to wrap this there we go so now it goes to two so it's around the width is around 33 percent and then it goes to three which is around 66 and then next and it goes to four all right now obviously we can't go back with the previous so let's continue on here and I want to first check we're just going to do an if statement here and check the current active so if the current active is equal to one so if it's if it's in its first place we want previous to be disabled so we can take the previous button and we can simply set disabled and we can set that to true it's initially set to true but we're going to make it uh, we're, we're going to take that off once we click next. But if we go back, we want it to go back to true. So we want to set that and then let's do an else if. And for this else, if we're going to say if the current basically want to see if it's at the end. So if it equals the total length of circles, so circles length, then we know it's at the end. So then we'll disable the next button. So we'll take next and set disabled and set that to true else then we want to we don't want either of them to be disabled so we'll take previous dot disabled and set that to false and we also want to do the same with next this means that we're in the middle so we'll save that I'll click next and now previous is available to us if I click next again and then next again now I can't click next because we're at the end if I click previous goes back back and then goes disabled. OK, so that's it. And I know obviously this by itself isn't much use to you, but you can at least see how the logic works as far as the progress bar. And you could use this 
in uh, any kind of steps really a shopping cart uh, whatever it might be a, a, a form some kind of form so feel free to take this and run with it and create something bigger and better uh, but that's it let's go ahead and move on to the next project